Three um, initiatives I'm going to talk about um, quickly for you today. Proven care for acute episodic care. And this is um, in the context of the request from, the, from Elaine, from Stewart, that we talk about payment reform. So we'll talk about um, uh, proven care acute, proven care chronic disease, where we take a look at that 20% of our population that consumes 80% of the resources, and proven health navigator, which is our um, uh, trade name for advanced medical home, transitions of care, which Stuart alluded to briefly with his discharge planning story. Um, a lot of initiatives underway there, but I'm going I'm to move past that. Um, distinct advantages for Geisinger. Obviously, we've got um, an employed group of now 1,400 providers, so everybody's on the same team. It makes it a lot easier for us. The marketplace, homogeneous population, many people have been cared for for four generations at Geisinger. They don't move. They don't move from the insurance plan. They don't move from the health system, an advantage for us. Um, accountability, very aggressive goals for all leadership within the organization that are aligned with those of Dr. Steele. So everybody's focused with strong financial incentives to achieve quality outcomes and reducing cost. And then the sweet spot, 40% of the people that we care for, we both insure and provide the care for. So if we keep that population healthy, the insurance company does better and all of the proceeds, profits in the insurance company when we have them get reinvested in the clinical enterprise. So an advantage for Geisinger in that regard. Proven care acute. We identified high volume DRGs, high volume, high risk, high cost DRGs. We put our clinicians in a room and said, what are the evidence-based best practices that should be applied to all of them? Um, we want to deliver that care in a consistent fashion. The health plan contracted with the providers for a global fee for the care of that patient. And the providers, hospital and doctors, agreed that any complications, risk, additional cost associated with that patient would be borne by the providers. So standard fee global payment for 90-day period. No additional payments for complications. So in cardiac care, this is cabbage for us, the one example that I'll share with you. We started out using the Pennsylvania Healthcare Cost Containment Council as one of the best performing cardiac surgery programs in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania consistently. But if you look at what happened after we instituted proven care and everybody agreed to the best practice and it got hardwired into the electronic record so that you couldn't get to the next step without um, either explaining why you weren't going to follow the best practice or in the alternative just proceeding, you can see that in all of the metrics we looked at, we had substantial um, improvements. And actually for an 18-month period, there was zero mortality um, for cabbage patients with uh, a, an expected mortality rate of about 1.9%. Um, you can see that we don't achieve 100% of the metrics on every patient, and the times that we fall off the curve, it's typically be, been because there's been a new provider that's joined the organization who doesn't understand how committed we are to best practices all the time. But pretty consistently with most of our proven care initiatives, um, all of the metric components have been achieved. And financially, everybody did better. Um, financially, the contribution margin to the hospital um, was much higher, obviously, because complications went down, profitability went up. The health plan paid out less on a per-case basis. And most importantly, when those cabbage patients were taken care of within the Geisinger Health System, um, the, profit of the, the payments from the health plan were down considerably less than for the rest of the um, providers within their network. Proven care chronic disease, um, and you know the culprits um, because we deal with them all the time, but there was a um, commitment from the organization that we weren't going to look at individual best practices. We were going to bundle all of the best practices. So it wasn't okay for diabetic patients to get four or five of the best practices routinely done on your patients. We provided significant financial incentives to our primary care physicians to provide best practices for the entire group. And when we started this in 06, and we asked our primary care doctors what percentage of their patients they thought re received all of these best practices, and they were a little bit sheepish in saying, well, we know we do a really good job, but we probably only get all of them about 30% of the time. And as you can see, first pass, it was 2% of the time. Um, but continuous focus on trying to achieve all best practices um, has shown steady improvement, and that's been the case with each chronic disease that we've worked on going forward. 
Um, coronary artery disease, same type of numbers, but you can see um, fairly consistent improvements across the board. Um, easier with a steady population that doesn't move from doc to doc, from health plan to health plan. Um, and you can see the, the line for um, primary care average for percentage compliant for cardiac disease. This is what we call our preventive care bundle, where you look at all of the um, best practices for that population and you can see significant improvements over a four-year period from 9% to 28% of our patients now getting all of the preventive measures on a routine basis as scheduled. So these are the challenges that we're bumping into right now. Um, um, we think some of our initiatives are too broad in scope. And um, for example, in the case of diabetes, we've had lengthy discussions about what should be the metrics that we pursue aggressively instead of all nine. What are the ones that will be critical long term for the well-being of that population? And time will tell. But um, we're chasing LDL and hypertension right now and a much um, tighter focus in that regard. Smaller cohorts, we really need to be doing this for 25,000 patients and tracking all of that data. And then finally, the big challenge, which I'll talk a little bit more in a couple minutes about, is um, specialist PCP interactions. How do you provide incentives to medical and surgical specialists to help care for populations of patients and move away from the assembly line model where doing more is the only way that you can be well compensated for, for your efforts? Advanced medical home. Um, Rick Gilfillan, who's down at Medicare now, was the point person for the health plan on this. And to Rick's credit, Geisinger Health Plan made a substantive financial investment in our primary care network of 250 docs to make this a reality. Um, wanted to provide our primary care physicians with an assurance that their compensation was not going to be impacted, that their investment in energy to re-engineer their practices was not going to compromise their ability to care well for their patients. Um, Probably the most important thing that was done was the health plan hiring about 250 nurses to embed as case managers within the primary care practices who bore responsibility for 120 to 150 of the most complex chronically ill patients. You know them well, average age 74, three to four chronic diseases. They take 12 to 15 pills per day. They've had two to three hospitalizations over the, pri over the previous year um, and typically don't have the support that they need to access their specialty follow-up care and to make sure that their prescriptions get filled. Those nurses provide continuity, what we call concierge care for the sick as opposed to concierge care for the wealthy, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Those nurses know those patients as well as their family members know, their patient, know those patients. They're in their homes frequently and you'll see what the result is of the um, investments that have been made. About 65,000 patients currently being cared for in that model. And we've seen across the board with almost every practice that's gone live with medical home, 25% reduction in patient admissions, um, comparable number of days reduced, 50, over a 50% reduction in readmissions. Um, providers are much more happier providing the care in that, in that context. The patients and their family members are thrilled. Um, and it's been very gratifying for all involved. And as Stuart described in the, what Dr. Steele is fond of calling the food fight in Washington last year about, um, about health care reform, trying to bend the curve and contemplating a 1% um, reduction in the increase over the course of 10 years, um, we've seen consistently in all of our practices between 5 and 6% reduction, almost immediately with the implementation of medical home now in 44 sites and we've been as or more successful in non-Geisinger sites as we have been with our own employed sites. Talked about, with, um, talked about that with one of the audience members earlier this morning. Um, critically important, the docs are still paid fee for service, so they still get compensated um, for the work that they do in their office. There are quality incentives that are provided to those primary care docs. Um, there are stipends provided both to the individual physician on a monthly basis and to the practice for any investment and resource that they need to make to be able to reconfigure to manage the medical home in an appropriate fashion. And then finally, if the thresholds for quality achieve, are achieved by a practice site, there's a um, very aggressive formula for the sharing of the savings. And for a primary care physician, our 
what was in the New York Times, so I can probably share it here. Um, uh, Five-person primary care practice um, realizing a $300,000 payment in one year to their practice site because there were huge reductions in cost for their panel of patients. And uh, the partnership that exists between our insurance plan and the primary care doctors couldn't be stronger because it's a true partnership right now. A couple of pilots that are underway right now with specialty care. We're trying to figure out a creative way to compensate specialists for what we call intellectual capital. How do we get a nephrologist to bear the responsibility, for example, for an entire population of patients with uncontrolled hypertension and only see those patients that are most appropriate, appropriate for them to see? So in the case of endocrinology, we've set up algorithms within the electronic record which automatically shuttles patients to the right location for their care based on their um, A1C. So you can see certain categories, the PCP retains responsibility. In others, their case management services provided by the health plan, GHP. Um, and then finally, it's a select population of patients, since our endocrinologists are overrun to begin with, select population of patients that finally make it to the endocrinologist in the form of an automatic referral if their A1C hasn't been controlled. And we've seen superb early results with our endocrinologists being able to affect controls that our primary care docs have not been able to, but we're being selective about who makes it to the endocrinologist. And the endocrinology group will be compensated for the care of the population, not on a care. They'll still get their fee-for-service payment, but there will also be payment from the health plan for the population management of that group. Same example with nephrology that I started with early before, a specific algorithm built into the electronic record for purposes of deciding who makes it to a nephrologist, when and where, and then what services are provided by nephrology to the primary care network, and a lot of um, support for outreach to the primary care sites to provide ongoing education for that group. So here's the Geisinger summary. We think the quality and efficiency are inextricably linked. Um, quality goes up, costs are ultimately going to go down. Um, there needs to be care redesign of uh, some of the examples that I shared with you. And Geisinger is pushing hard to do that on a daily basis. And we recognize huge advantages that we enjoy because of the partnership that we have with the insurance company.